Hey everyone, welcome to the second video for section 3.1. Um, this video we're going to actually get into solving these second order linear constant coefficient equations. So we're going to see some ideas that are similar to ones that we saw in first order equations and then see how they sort of work in this case to get a solutions to these pretty simple equations to solve. So let's go ahead and jump right on into that. So in this section we want to actually try to solve the constant coefficient second order linear equation. And what does that equation look like again? We saw it at the end of the last video. It's a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero. So in order to sort of get motivation for how to solve this, let's take a look at the corresponding first order equation. So if I was to have a first order constant coefficient equation, what would that look like? Well, that would look like that would look like y prime plus a y equals zero, right? Now, how do we get a solution to this? Well, if we do integrating factors and move everything out, we see we get a solution that looks like y of t equals some constant times e to the minus a t, right? The integrating factor you need is e to the a t. You multiply that on both sides, you integrate, you get a constant on the right, and then you, you cancel the e to the, e to the a t to give you that as your solution. So what we saw is that for constant coefficients, exponentials end up being a good way to go to get solutions. So what we're going to do is we're going to guess, we're going to assume that the solution to our constant coefficient second order equation, this guy up here, we're going to assume that this guy has an exponential solution and then see what happens. So I'm actually going to write this in red so you know, remember it's an assumption. We are going to assume that we have a solution. of the form y of t equals e to the rt for some r. I don't know what the r is going to be yet, but we'll assume we have a solution that looks like this. Well, then what happens? What is What are y prime and y double prime? Well, I can just take derivatives of this pretty easily. y prime of t is just r e to the rt, and y double prime of t is just r squared e to the rt. Right, that's how exponentials work. You just pull down constants that are in front when you take derivatives. So let's plug all of this into our actual ODE and see what we get. So I had a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero, which turns into a r squared e to the r t plus b r e to the r t plus c e to the rt equals zero. And now e to the rt is never zero. So I can just divide both sides by e to the rt, get rid of u, get rid of u, get rid of u, leaving me with a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. And this will get an orange box because it's more important. So what does this equation tell me? This tells me that if r solves this equation, then e to the rt is a solution. So if r satisfies this equation, then phi of t equals e to the rt is a solution to the OD. Also, vice versa goes through. If I have a solution of this form, then R solves its equation. So everything we just did equations back and forth. So everything was you know up and down goes the same way. So we had this idea: if R solves this equation, then e to the rt is a solution. So all I have to do is find the roots of this quadratic polynomial. That's pretty easy. The a, b, and c they should be suggestive. We just have quadratic formula. So we always have two solutions, right? So our roots are going to be of the following form r is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a, right? Quadratic formula tells me what my roots look like. And this is always the case. We get this answer. So that that's, I mean, that effectively solves the equation. Um, if I assume I have solutions of the form e to the rt, this is how I find my r and I get solutions of that form. Um, there are a couple of questions still to ask here. Well, what can happen to these roots and what happens? And two, is that really all the solutions? 
So in section 3.2, we will go through the proof that as long as I get two solutions here, we have all the solutions for the equation. And that's enough to specify everything. So that's at least a start. If I can get to the through 3.2, that'll tell me this part. But the other question is, well, how do we get solutions of this form? So if we look at this expression here, there are three different cases for what kind of roots we can get, right? Let me move this up a little bit so you can still see the equation here. That's our roots right there. There are three different options. Option one, the roots are real and distinct. And this happens when b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0. Two, you have complex conjugates. This is b squared minus 4ac less than 0. And three, you have a repeated root. This is when b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So there are always going to be two solutions. So one of them might be doubled. And these are the three cases for it. If b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0, you get two distinct roots that are both real. If it's less than 0, you get two complex conjugate roots. And if b equals 0, you get a repeated root. If you haven't seen anything with complex numbers before, there's going to be an extra video posted um, to go with section 5.4 that's going to talk about the complex numbers and the vague things, the basic things you need to know about them for this class. So there are three options here. Um, the complex conjugates is going to be section 3.3. The repeated roots is going to be section 3.4. And we're going to talk about real and distinct roots right now. So if I have two roots that are both real and distinct. So assume R1 and R2 solve this equation. A R squared plus B R plus C equals zero. Now, and I realize I forgot to actually define this term. This is called the characteristic equation for the ODE. The ODE A Y double prime plus B Y prime plus C Y equals zero. That is the term given to this quadratic here for this equation, right? So from a linear constant coefficient ODE, we can derive a characteristic equation, and the characteristic equation corresponds to an ODE. So if I have these two roots R1 and R2 that solve my characteristic equation, then the result that we're going to prove in the next section is that my general solution is of the form y of t equals c1 e to the r1 t plus c2 e to the r2 t. We already know that this guy and this guy both individually solve the ODE because their corresponding roots are course solve the characteristic equation. But the point that the fact this is a general solution, we don't know yet. That's going to come up in section 3.2. But you can write it down right now. If you have two distinct roots, the general solution is always of this form. It's a constant times e to the first root of t plus a constant times e to the second root t. All right, um, that is the points for this video. We just had to get through how to, what a character equation is and how, what general solutions look like for real and distinct roots. We'll have general solutions as well for the repeated root case and the complex root case, but those will come in the next couple sections. So I've got one example for you guys to work on for finding the general solution to an equation. It's just going to be doing these last couple steps here where you find the characteristic equation, you find its roots, and you write out your solution of this form. So I'll put that problem up for you guys right now. All right, so there's a problem for you to look at. Um, in the last video, you had a, an example to plug in for something that actually solved this equation, but now you actually get to find what the general solution looks like. So take a look at that, it should not be too complicated. Just go back and load the video if you need to to look at what the steps were and fill out and put that in the worksheet. All right, thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll just go through a couple examples of finding general solutions to equations and solving initial value problems for them. So if you wanna look at that first and then come back, you're welcome to do that too. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.